with Deadpool and Wolverine in theaters currently, I thought now is a good time to stop and rank every single theatrically released X-Men and X-Men related movie. Now, emphasis on theatrically released X-Men movies, because I know that there's people out there like Grace Randolph that included the TV shows and cartoons. And while that is fun to do, I have not seen every TV show or cartoon. I have not seen Wolverine and the X-Men, and I have not seen Legion. Despite the fact that I've seen X-Men the Animated Series, X-Men Evolution, and The Gifted, I have not watched those shows in a long time to give a fair and sound assessment of them in order to rank them. And of course, I will give glory to X-Men 97, which is still fresh in my mind. But like I said, I'm only focusing on theatrically released X-Men and X-Men related movies, so let's get into it. Coming in last place is X-Men Origins Wolverine, which in my opinion is the worst X-Men movie ever made. And I know people have Dark Phoenix as the worst, but for me, this is the worst. And it's probably not fair to think of this as the worst because it is a product of the writer's strike of 07 and 08. But to me, this movie just didn't come together right. The way they just brushed through um, Wolverine's origin. Wolverine and Sabretooth are brothers, which was not established in the first movie. Those horrible CGI claws that did not look good even back in 2009. Now, Taylor Kitsch was admittedly a good gambit, at least in this movie, and I wish he had stronger material to work with. And, Dead and um, Deadpool, played by Ryan Reynolds in the first act of this movie, showed that he could be a good Deadpool, but then they threw it all away with the ending with, by turning him from the Merc with the mouth to the Merc without a mouth. Less said about that, the better. You know it's a bad sign when you can get your hands on a bootleg copy of this movie that has unfinished special effects because that's what I watched when I saw this for the first time. Coming in at number 13 is Dark Phoenix, which was their second attempt at trying to adapt the Dark Phoenix story arc and it failed horribly. This was the last mainline X-Men movie under the Fox regime, but it was released after Disney had bought Fox. And when this movie was released, a lot of people, myself included, collectively said, Marvel, Disney, come get your kids. The reason I have this over Origins Wolverine is because it does do some cool and interesting things. Like with Charles Xavier, how the X-Men are seen as heroes now. And he's trying everything he can to keep the peace, even putting them in dangerous situations. And even Mystique calls him out on it like, tell me this is not for your ego. But like he said in the movie, we are one bad day from them seeing them as the enemy. But it still doesn't change the fact that this movie came together wrong. Jessica Chastain, she looked like she could give a fuck less. Jennifer Lawrence, you only thought she was funny in, in Apocalypse, but here she could also give a fuck less. She could not wait to get out of this movie. I mean, I did like the infight in the train. That it counts for something. At number 12 is The New Mutants, which came out off of the heels of Logan and the Deadpool movies being a success and proving that R-rated superhero movies could be good. But this right here... I don't know what the fuck happened. I remember watching this when movie theaters opened up during the pandemic. I do feel like this movie really could have been cool. I was looking forward to it after all of its 5011 release dates. And I can honestly say it's not bad, but it's not particularly good either. But it was cool to see obscure X-Men be adapted to the screen that haven't been adapted before, so... Coming in at number 11 is X-Men The Last Stand. Now, this movie and the next one... And number 10, I say, even though I don't consider them good X-Men movies, I do have fond memories of them. But this one in particular, because I remember my old church home, we had youth nights. And so we went to the Magic Johnson Theater. And this was the movie I chose to see in the theater. But everybody was talking throughout the whole movie. And at the end, when after Magneto had lost his powers and he's sitting at the table trying to play chess. And I hear someone behind me saying, oh, Magneto doesn't have his powers no more. Nigga, get a job. But I do like the whole mutant cure story arc within this movie. I thought that was a cool and interesting idea. But this movie was also the um, the first time they tried to adapt the Phoenix storyline. And yeah, we saw how that turned out. I did like seeing um, Ben Foster as um, Angel. I thought um, Kelsey Grammer as the Beast was inspired casting. But overall, this movie just didn't stick the landing in terms of the original X-Men trilogy. Coming in at number 10 is X-Men Apocalypse, which... Like X-Men The Last Stand, I don't think it's as bad as everyone made it out to be, but at the same time, I also recognize it's not particularly good. I just remember this movie came out after my dad had passed away, and so when I went to go see it, I was in a more forgiving mood, but after seeing it, while I'm not grieving, I can recognize those flaws. Like Oscar Isaac, he could have been a good Insaba Noor, and I'm not even going to make the joke about how he looks like Ivan Newis from the Power Rangers movie. That is a tired-ass joke, I'm not going to make it here, but he just wasn't given strong material to work with. But I did like him every time he was um, chewing up scenery when he said, Everything they've built will fall! You can fire your arrow 
blows from the Tower of Babel, but you can never strike God! The best way to watch this movie is just think of it like an episode of the cartoon. Now, the Wolverine is not a perfect Wolverine, standalone Wolverine movie, but it's still better than Origins Wolverine, and I'll give it that. And a lot of people say that the, the first two acts are strong, but the third act is where it all fell off. I slightly disagree. I thought the third act was pretty entertaining. That train sequence during the second act was awesome. Coming in at number eight is Deadpool 2. I've already talked about this uh, movie on my channel. Check it out. But I pretty much echo all the things I said in that video here. It's not the best Deadpool movie. It's definitely the weakest of the three Deadpool movies we've gotten. But it's still a fun and entertaining movie that keeps the spirit of those first of the first movie. At number seven is the first X-Men movie, which not only kicked off the X-Men movie franchise, but it was the second stepping stone in kicking off the modern age of superhero movies. Even though this movie isn't as colorful as the um, comics or the cartoon, which is a criticism a lot of people like to make about this movie, and it's fair, but to me, this movie was still the perfect blueprint on how to make an X-Men movie that is accessible for general audiences. Uh, Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart, that is flawless casting for Professor X and Magneto. Um, Hugh Jackman came in as an unlikely choice for Wolverine, and now fast forward t over 20 years later, we can't see nobody else but Hugh Jackman playing Wolverine. I have a lot of nostalgic memories of this first movie, but the best had yet to come. At number six is Deadpool and Wolverine. And again, I've done a non-spoiler and spoiler review of this movie. Check it out. But like I said, the, the chemistry between Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds is perfect and flawless. And it was also a fitting send off to the Fox era of Marvel movies. But it was still a good Deadpool movie. Kicking off the top five is the first Deadpool movie. This movie proved that R rated superhero content can work. Ryan Reynolds is perfect as Deadpool and is just downright hilarious. At number four is X-Men First Class, which is the CPR that the franchise needed. We get to see a young Professor X and Magneto, and we see how we get to see the beginning of their relationship and what led to them basically going their separate ways. We get younger versions of some X-Men that we've seen in the movies before. This movie revived the series after the failures of The Last Stand and Origins Wolverine. A lot of people consider this the best X-Men film, and they're not wrong to feel that way, but there's three more entries left on this list, so let's get into it. At number three is X2, X-Men United, which for a long time people considered the best X-Men movie, and some people still do, and they're not wrong because this movie is also a perfect example on sequels that turn out to be better than the original. I like how we touch on um, Logan's story arc or origin in this movie a lot better than Origins Wolverine. Alan Cumming as um, Nightcrawler, that first scene alone, flawless. This movie built on everything that was established in that first movie. I remember the anticipation was high when this movie came out, and it did not disappoint. It was one of the best movies of 2003. At number two is X-Men Days of Future Fast. And funny enough, this movie came out 10 years ago, and now 10 years later, we got Deadpool and Wolverine. But this movie is not just a good time travel movie, but it united both the original cast and the first class class together. Seeing a young and old Professor X together, breathtaking. Seeing the Sentinels on screen for the first time, also breathtaking. X-Men First Class gave the series CPR, but Days of Future Past brought it back to life. But at number one is Logan, which I'm sure a lot of people have in number one. It was pretty obvious. To me, this, is, this isn't just a good standalone Wolverine movie, but it's a good X-Men movie. It was fun. It was entertaining. It was emotional. This is definitely the best of the X-Men movies. At the time, it gave a great send-off to both Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart as these characters. James Mangold really showed his ass when he directed this movie. To me, this movie was a great way to end the series on a good note, on a great note, on a meaningful, emotional note. But that's how I rank every X-Men movie. Here you go, all 14 movies. Follow me on Letterboxd so you can see this list. And since Deadpool and Wolverine is technically a part of the MCU now, here's how I rank it with the rest of the movies within Marvel Phase 5. And here's how I rank it with the rest of the MCU movies. There you go, you see it at number 12 between Guardians 2 and the first Guardians. Tell me, what did you think of my ranking and how would you rank the X-Men movies? And no matter how you rank these movies, I think we can all agree right now it's a good time to be an X-Men fan.